Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to demonstrate a process for authoring a new tube and pipe style inside of my tube and pipe runs template. That way, every time I start a new piping runs assembly, I will have access to the particular uh, host styles that I want. I don't have to recreate them or transfer them on the fly. Now, quick note before I start, I'm using a vault project file and in my vault project file, if I take a look at this, you see that my design data is also vaulted. This is a great technique if you want to make sure that all of your, that all of your data is actively managed, uh, version control, things like that. So it's a good idea. You should definitely vault it, but it does mean that you do have to check out your design data. So depending on what you're going to check, uh, what you're going to be modifying, you may want to check out all of your design data from the vault. Now, in my case, I'm only going to check out a single file. And what I'm going to do is open up <clears throat> the piping runs. So just so you can see where the piping runs lives, you, you may have to navigate away from your designs area. And mine is just in a local workspace, just one level up from my work my working folder. So I come in here and there's my tube and pipe. And the next thing to note, besides having to check it out, is I like to make a copy of it every time I'm gonna make a modification. That way if something goes wrong, I can always come back in here and I can <clears throat> revert back to the old version. I mean, I know you probably will never make a mistake, but yeah, sometimes Pete does. So what I do is I'll go ahead and date stamp it that way I know the last time that this was backed up and you have to edit the one named piping runs. That's the one that inventor is looking for. It'll complain about not being in the workspace, but that's okay for what we're doing. Now <clears throat> we do want to make sure that we check it out because I want to check out this file. That way, if I make any edits to it, I can check it back in. Everybody will be able to get it. So I'll go ahead and grab this file. We've checked it out. Now we can make modifications. So to make a new tube and pipe style, we come in here and there can be rigid pipes. It can be form tubes. We're going to make a PEX hose today. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the flexible hose. And I could find a style that's close, like this hydraulic hose taper thread, and copy that. And that might save a little bit of time. But I'll show you the full process here. So we'll just start a new flexible hose. We'll call this red PEX. It'll be one half uh, ND. And then we'll say three quarter NPT. That way we're going to use fittings on both ends that are threaded. So to come in here, I'll go ahead and find my family. Now there's a lot of stuff in here. So what I recommend, and I talk about this when I make videos on publishing, is I like to make my own standard. In this case, I'll use D3. I'll filter by that. And then I could find my red PEX. Now I've got it broken out by stock number, but we can just grab this one. And I know that's my half inch red PEX. And then as far as fittings, I've also published some of the fittings. And we can filter by that. There's my PEX half inch bar, three quarter inch NPT. We'll go ahead and do that. Now, just to note, you can, if you want to, you can suppress a fitting. So if you wanted to have one that's threaded and then one end that you'd attach in the field, or you might have both, you could suppress either one. But I'll go ahead and add them and it can save a little bit of time. I don't need to filter. I know mine's at the very bottom. So that's the gist of it. You want to grab the components that you want. I'm also going to publish it into a PEX subcategory to make it kind of its own little partition. And then in the rules area, this is where you would define your criteria as far as what's the minimum bend radius. And then I don't want people cutting hoses down to like the nearest eighth inch, just nearest inch is good enough for me. And then once you feel good about those rules, you go ahead and save it. And now you see that it's added the pecs. It's added that particular style. We'll close this. We'll save our template. And then of course, because we're using vault, we have to check it in. And uh, it's always a good idea to add a note. So added a 
one half inch uh, nominal diameter red pecs with fittings style. Hopefully you guys can spell better than I can. <laughs> Go ahead and check that in. And then of course next we will close it because Inventor gets very cranky trying to start new things with the template open. And yeah, we'll test it out. So I've opened up an assembly that I use in other classes. So it's just kind of this random assortment of attachment points. But really what I want to illustrate here is when I go over the environments and I launch a new piping runs assembly, and I'm going to accept all the defaults. <clears throat> By placing that style in the template, it's now available in every new piping run that we create. So this saves us oodles of time to get our data into place. Test it out here. And yes, totally not fitting, but you can make fun of me. I'm okay with that. And there you can see it's our custom red packs route inside of a brand new tube and pipe styles. So hopefully you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.